Hello everyone. In this new tutorial, we will look into how to sculpt hair in Blender using different sculpting techniques. So let's start with this one. Here I have a head base mesh which I will be using for this tutorial. If you would like to use the same head model, then I have provided a link for it in the video description below. You can download and import the obj or fbx file. Press Shift A and add a cube object. Move it above the head. Add a 3 level subdivision modifier with Ctrl 3 and apply the modifier as well. Right click and smooth shade the object. This will be used to build the base of the hair. Slightly scale it down and position it so that it covers the top head part. Press Ctrl A for the transform menu and select scale so our sculpting brushes work correctly. Now switch to the sculpt mode. I will be using the grab move brush. Turn on X symmetry. In the options turn off fast navigate so the model does not switches to low resolution during viewport movements. Using a low strength value. Start moving the sides and top of the hair object downwards. The wireframe setting is in the overlay menu. Assign a shortcut for it if you need to use it. The base hair object is fairly low resolution and it should be enough to build our block out shape. Move the points down on the side a little more. I am keeping the shape simple for this tutorial. Next add a UV sphere object. I will use the default settings for it. Scale down the object and position it on the top front. Smooth shade and make it slightly long. This will be used for making the hair strands. Using the transform tool, rotate and move it to the top. We don't need too much resolution at this stage as we are building the overall raw forms of the hair. It is always better to use hair reference images so you have a good idea of where to place different hair objects. I am just following a generic shape design here. Control A and reset the transform scale of the first hair strand object. Switch to the sculpt board. Using the grab brush, I will slightly deform the shape of the object. Push the points on the top towards the center and also bending the lower part. Once we have a base shape, exit the sculpt mode. In the object mode, shift D to duplicate the hair object and place the different copies on the front side. Here you can change the scale, rotation, position of each hair strand to build the overall hair shape. I will continue making duplicate copies and position them on the sides. It is better to spend more time here properly adding the details as needed. This will give better results later in the sculpting process. I will skip adding any detail on the back side but you can add if you like to. Copy the same objects and place them on the other side. Using this way you can create almost any hair shape block outs. You can use sphere, cylinders or any other basic objects. Once our hair blockout is ready, select everything except the head. You can lock the head object in the outliner so it is not selected. Press M and create a new collection and place all the hair parts in it. I will rename it to hair blockout. Right click and duplicate the collection and hide the original as backup in case we need to use it later for some other hair model. 
With all the hair parts selected, right click and join them. In case you see a error message, active object is not a selected mesh. For this, simply click any hair object again with all the other hair objects selected, right click and join them. We should have one hair object now. If the pivot of the object is on the side, we can position it in the middle. From the object menu, set origin to geometry. Next, control A and reset the transform scale. Switch to the sculpt mode. Using the grab brush again, I will refine the shape of the hair. One setting we can enable is the typology option in the brush menu. This will allow us to move only those parts which are under the brush area and not the entire mesh. Now we can start moving the different hair parts. Try to move the parts to go towards the middle of the head so the hair has a more natural flow of shape. You can make some parts on the front long or short. Take your time to refine the shape and rotate the viewport to see the model from all sides. In case you want to add more hair strands or remove anything, you can switch back to the edit mode and select any part to change it. For instance, in the back, select one face, press L to select all faces of that object, shift D to create a copy and you can then place the new part as needed. Same process for deleting any part. Save your file here and make a backup copy of this hair object as we are going to remesh everything in the next step for sculpting. In the sculpt mode, go to the remesh setting, turn on fix poles. This setting seems to give much better results. Press R for the remesh grid. If your remesh grid is slightly rotated, go back in the object mode, press Ctrl A and reset transform rotation. This should fix the remesh grid rotation. Back in sculpt mode, press R and move the mouse to change the grid size. Let's first try a bigger grid size. Release the mouse to set the grid. Press Ctrl R for the remesh operation. You can see we are losing too much detail here and the result looks a bit low poly. So Ctrl Z and this time we will make the grid size more dense and smaller. Ctrl R to perform the remesh operation. The result looks much more better and all parts are seamlessly blending with each other. We can now smooth the object. Shift click and brush over the model to make the shape smoother. You can also use the grab brush to move some areas to refine the shape. In case there are some issues in the mesh or some parts are not looking smoother, Ctrl R again to remesh the model once more. Next, we will use different brushes to improve our sculpt. First one is the snake hook brush. It is useful for extending any part of the sculpt area. Simply drag out. We can also sculpt a little hair detail on the top using this brush. Use it with the grab move brush to refine the shape. If we zoom in, you may notice that it looks a little low poly. 
Remember to use Ctrl R to rebuild the typology whenever there is stretching happening on the model during sculpting. Let's use the draw sharp brush for some additional detailing. If you need more control for this brush, then turn on stabilize stroke setting. Draw over the model to create some lines. Holding control will push the points outwards instead of going in. Shift smooth to blend the details. In the same way, you can also try using the elastic deform, the thumb brush or the inflate brush to make more shape changes. Give each brush a try and see how it affects the sculpting results. I will speed up this part of the video as most of the sculpting shown here is making small adjustments. Remember to take your time and experiment with different brushes and settings and also view your model from all sides. Most of the time your sculpted models will end up in high resolution objects especially if there is complex detail in it. Sometimes you can do optimizations as well. I have shown this process in my previous video as well but I will show it again. I will duplicate our sculpted model and place it on the side. We will go in the remesh menu, use the quadri flow option. Using 4000 as total face count, I will remesh the model. It can take some time to process depending on the model complexity. As soon as the remesh operation is completed, we will have a much more optimized version of the model. However, keep in mind that in this process, we may lose some details as well. So you need to test different face count values and decide whether any optimizations are needed or not. If we look at the wireframe of the models, you can see the new model looks good enough at maintaining most of the bigger shapes. There is some detail loss on the top. We can add a two level subdivision modifier or a multi res modifier for making the model smoother and sculpt back some details again. The new model looks better at some places as compared to the original sculpted model because the face count is much more less. Now coming back to the final part of adding extra hair details, not everything has to be sculpted. We can also use the curves method. For this, first add a curve circle object. Move it to the side and make it smaller. After that, add a Bezier curve. Using the transform tool, rotate it, position it on the side of the head. In the curve properties, use the object setting. In the object option, select the circle curve object which we added earlier. The Bezier curve will follow the shape and create a tube like object. Make the circle object smaller to control the thickness. You can use the fill caps option to close any open ends of the curve. With the Bezier curve selected, go in edit mode. Select all points, right click and select subdivide to add an extra point in between the two endpoints. Now you can easily move the points to build the shape of the hair. To make any point thinner, press Alt S and move the mouse. In this way you can create duplicate copies of the curve and add more details which would be difficult to make through sculpting. The good point about this approach is that you can easily change the shape of the hair and position them as you need. Making any change to the circle object will update all the Bezier curves using it. 
if you edit the vertex point of the circle object, you can create complex hair shapes as well. Sometimes you can even build your entire hair model using the curves method. However, it is better to use it alongside your sculpted hair. From here you can continue refining it more or maybe try making a different hair sculpt. And this completes the tutorial. I hope you find it useful. If you like to see more in the future, then please consider subscribing, giving this video a like and turn on notification bell. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.